Welcome, my pal, sir. Welcome to the webinar show. Welcome, sir. Well, good evening. Gulab, make a pause sir, the host so that he can share the PPT after my introduction. Sir, Pao, sir, he is a co host now. He can share his PPT. Okay, great. Okay, we will start at sharp 5 11. You can I share screen. Let me voice. Voice is not audible. Your voice is Sir, not audible. I will start at 511 and after my introduction, I will allow you to share your okay. screen. Okay. Sir. Hello everyone, I am back with my series of IP webinar. This is the 15th webinar in the series. This is about electrical fire analysis and the prevention measures. We daily wake up with the news of electrical fires. These news force us to think, why do this happen every day? 
who is responsible for all these things? Why don't we learn from the previous accident and incident? Why do we wait for another accident to happen? It is painful. It is in fact very painful. It hurts everyone. We have good learned professionals. We have good machineries and tools. We have good safety regulations, but the results are not up to the mark. I don't know where lies the problem. To make the people aware about the concern of electrical fires, I have invited Honorable Respected S. Pauser today, who is with me. I don't want to feel guilty if I don't mention the names of my well-wishers, mentions, and my friends who made me to reach is to this position where I am right now. I would like to thank Almighty, my parents, my family, my wife, son, my mentors, respected P.P. Vai sir, K.K. Murthy sir, K.K. Gupta ji, N.K. Mithyal ji, P. Ramachandran sir, Hitesh Chuan ji, and Dr. Kamal Bansal. My friends and well-wishers, Saket ji, Arvind Tukral ji, Dr. Vikas, S.K. Batra ji, Last but not the least, my team working day and night for me, Gulab and Ram Dhani. Now time to give a brief introduction about the today presenter, Honorable Respected S. Pauser. I know very well that whatever I say about these legends will be a small drop in the ocean. I don't have exact words to describe the personality of this legend. Having experience of more than 40 years, has worked as a chief electrical inspector in Tamil Nadu, retired in 2015. He has also worked in PWD. His experiences include calibration and testing of electrical measuring instruments, motors, transformers, switch gears, scrutiny and approval of electrical drawings, inspections of EHV and EHV installation under CA regulation 2010. Investigations of electrical accident, very important part, and fire cause analysis. He has conducted many seminars organized by BAS, CA, IEEE, FICI, etc., on electrical installation, design, safety, earthing, and energy conservation. Without much ado, I would like to invite respected Apao sir and hand over this meeting webinar to him. Welcome to the show, sir. Kindly unmute, sir. You are muted. Apao, sir, you are muted. Unmute, please. Oh, fine. Thank you, Araraji. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, all the participants and my relatives. Uh, once again, I'm muting you today. Uh, I should thank Igniting Power Engineers for this August forum to disseminate and create awareness among the staff as well as the citizens of this country. It's a commendable job. I appreciate it. Uh, let me share the screen now. Uh, can I share it? Yeah, please share, sir. Please start. So please make it full screen. Ah. Is it visible? Is the screen visible? Yeah, it is visible, but, but it is not full screen. Okay. Perfectly okay right now. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, participants, once again, uh, it's a very good evening to you all. Uh, first of all, uh, in the week before 
Uh, Mr. Arora has asked me what do I have uh, regular on this subject. Uh, it's my favorite subject also because we are all aware that uh, fire, especially all the fires are attributed. The reasons are attributed towards electrical short circuit. So, am I uh, audible? Arora ji, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Please continue. Okay. So, what I want to say is most of the fires are attributed, the reasons are attributed to the cause of uh, electrical nature. Not only electrical, it's simply started as short circuit. It's, uh, it shows that either the uh, investigators, uh, there are very less number of electrical engineers in the investigation side, or uh, there could be reason for uh, the insurer or the stakeholders uh, or the consumer. Uh, can become, it will become easier for them to attribute the reason as electrical. I don't know what's the reason, but uh, however, I would like to say that this opportunity to say that we electrical engineers should be conversant with the basic principles of uh, fire due to electrical nature. And uh, I hope this uh, presentation will uh, make you uh, have a small idea on how to address the fires, whether it is electrical or non-electrical, or the fire investigators are uh, finding the electrical part as a scapegoat. So we should be uh, conversant with this subject. Then only we can be uh, truthful to the uh, management and as well as we can be confident at the workplace. That's what I want to say. Uh, of course, there are fire uh, where there is no electric supply. Still, there is a possibility that Electricity could have ignited the fire well in advance, and it would have uh, came into the planning process after some time, after say an interval of uh, one hour or half an hour. Such a fire uh, case study only I'm going to share with you. Then only it will be grasping, I hope, your mind so that uh, the basic principle can be learned. Anything hiding uh, the screen? Arora ji, is the screen fully visible or anything? Any yes, yes, it is visible, sir. Kindly continue. Okay, fine. So, uh, as, as I have already stated that electrical nature of hazards are many. One is due to lightning, due to natural force of, uh, forces. And as per National Train Records Bureau uh, for the accident. Uh, Gases in 2020, it's related to the death due to electricity. The first one is due to forces of nature, it's around 2862. And due to other causes, we face alterations throughout the year, either especially during the monsoon, and it's around 13 to 14,000 constantly every year. And coming to the electrical short circuit, uh, even uh, you can see even in that uh, NCRP 36 or that annual report is still stated as short circuit. Okay, this is started as short circuit even in the NCRB report. Of course, it may be due to the fact that the FIR first investigation reports are filed by the territorial inspectors all over the state and they filed the case as electrical short circuit. Whatever the reason of fire, it is uh, filed as electrical short circuit. It has become a, a easy word for all to attribute the fire to electrical short circuit. Okay. Before the going into the case study, I would like to say a few definitions of your terms, technical terms you use. You know that fire is nothing but a self-sustaining exothermic accident. It emits heat and light, and the smoldering is an important part. It's a slow, flameless, and incomplete form of combustion. Is, for example, a mosquito coil will be smoldering, and a camphor uh, will be firing. So this is the difference between a smolder and the fire. Smolder occurs whenever there is a uh, Yes, ventilation or deficit of oxygen 
are the nature of uh, element involved in the flame. And there, and there is one more term, flammable. Materials which are capable of burning with a flame is flammable. And you should avoid the terms uh, inflammable, something in, because it confuses people. So the standard term is non flammable. That is the material, they are not readily capable of burning with it and the combustible. And this is the accelerant, this is an important thing that any substance that accelerates development of and the escalation of fire. This is the thing that uh, some miscreants uh, can uh, use it. For example, you can put some uh, mineral oil or petrol kerosene something as a uh, retaliation or some miscreant activity. So another thing is incendiary. So a fire which is intentionally ignited. The person knows how it should, it should not uh, be ignited, but he ignites still because of some problem. He may be a, uh, an affected person or a, having a ill relationship with other people or management. Those people are trying to set fire on incendiary man. And in all the fire, there are visible shape and patterns that you will see in the uh, coming slides. So every fire affecting the material will stamp some impression. Either it can be, for example, a deep pattern, uh, because a fire will be uh, traveling like a plume, a plume, sorry, a plume of fire. It is something a feather like, a feather like uh, element. Yeah, as a candle, uh, you can see the candle flaming. There will be a, a plume of fire. So that plume will be impressed after the fire, uh, complete fire analysis. There will be leftover. The, the, the investigator should analyze those leftover impressions and the it is available material in the fire spot. Another is the flash point. It's the lowest temperature a yeah, substance can evaporate. But it requires some trigger source. But this is a difference of, there's a difference in English and temperature. It's a temperature at which yeah, material can get ignited by itself without any external flame. So temperature is a higher temperature. At certain temperature, it can withstand. After that, you don't require any external flame. By itself, you uh, ignite what is called auto ignition. It's from the sources which can uh, have this much of temperature. Uh, for example, uh, unventilated cigarettes may cost you most of the forest fires are occurring because of uh, uh, such uh, cigarettes and matches, candle flame. See, among the other things, if you see the electrical nature of working, the, the temperature is tremendous. In electrical arcing, it is around 3,750, and the spark, it may be 1,300. Coming to the lighting, it can be of uh, 30,000 degrees Celsius, more than uh, surface temperature of a sun by a four, by four fold. But uh, luckily, it's a very uh, duration of uh, such a lighting process, very minimal. And if that location is conducive to be readily ignited, or the, the, there, there is no protection muscles for the building, then you can have every chance of a lightning, lightning and the lightning. And the flash point is given for these materials. You can see the flash point of it because I'm going to present a case on for a typical fire in a textile mill. So I'm concerned with the cotton. See the flash point of cotton is 210 degree and the ignition temperature is 407 degree. Why I am saying these temperatures are because we should know the some physics of materials, then only we can see whether uh, what is the temperature that prevailed during the course of fire at a particular spot. For example, a diesel require an ignition temperature of 210 and wood require an ignition temperature of 260. If you have a cotton burnt at that place, then you can say that it is 407. Similarly, if it is aluminum, we can say it is 800, sorry, 700. And if it's copper, more than 800. If it's uh, steel, it can be 1,200. 
So by seeing the melting of uh, metals, you can see what will be the temperature that could prevail during that time of combustion or fire. For PVC, it can be uh, more than uh, 390 and 450 is the ignition temperature. So the appearance of certain metals will also vary. Uh, a steel can vary from yellow to uh, brown, purple and blue, depending upon the temperature differences. So these are the uh, physics related to this subject of uh, my, uh, my character. So we should know as an investigator, as an engineer, we should know the basic things as I already told. Those are uh, the sequence of the oil analyzing a fire cause. Uh, we should know the sequence of even events. We should collect all information, how the chronology, how the fire, when the fire occurred, it's accurate timing. And we should observe everything possible at the site. And previous history of fire should also, if any, we should ascertain from the people. We should thoroughly examine the evidence and fire pattern. And the, it is important to have the seat of fire. Once we know the origin or the seat of fire, then only we can see that the fire cause is possible. So there are a lot of fire causes possible in the fire, but I am uh, limiting it to these three elements, electrical, lightning, and incident. Uh, along with a case study. Finally, I will be saying, I will be recommending some remedial measure for the fire, uh, for, from the, uh, for the fire cause. One, when I investigated a typical textile mill for fire in Andhra Pradesh, I learned uh, several things. One is, first, I, I assessed the sequence of fever, the fire. There were two fires occurred in the previous First one was inside a, a lighting transformer. There is a, it's a lighting transformer inside a, 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 a the electrical panel, main ST to LT panel, where normal people do not approach. The fire ignite, got ignited inside the dry uh, type lighting transformer itself, it was extinguished by the people after switching of the uh, light. But that fire, when the fire occurred, was ascertained as 1148 mm, 1074, uh, as soon as simultaneously uh, during a power failure. So we should ascertain and the power failure timing also. It was ascertained from the electricity board that it was 1150. That could be some manual error due to in assigning timing between the board people, the lab book and the company people. So I had one more uh, reliable way of ascertaining the time. That was, I assessed the SPE generation. The, uh, the, the, the textile mill was having an SPE generation. If you know that uh, SPE we will generate, uh, it will not generate during power failure. So I ascertained the power every five minutes, it's a slot of five minutes. Right? At 15.55, that is, uh, Sorry, 11.45. That is at 11.45, there was a generation of 940 kilowatt hour. And next, it was continuously, there was no generation, up to 4.20 when the power was complete. So the timing could be 11.45 to 11.50. Within the five minutes start, after this, there is no generation. Uh, but when the people have gone to the assess, well, how, why the power has gone out in the premises, they went to their main substation, it was a 33 kV substation, and they, asked, they found that all the lightning at first failed. Uh, then they got, um, uh, they, they were uh, cooperating with the electricity board people to resume their supply. Uh, electricity board people have affected supply, but it would not be uh, affected because, to these premises because of the short circuiting of uh, all the lightning at first. At the 33 kilogram yard of uh, EV. Then, during that process, they got one more call from the shop. There is a fire at the uh, auto corner shop inside the mill premises. So, from an onlooker's uh, cell phone, I have turned the timing accurately as 12.51. So, one more fire occurred as at 12.51. First fire at 11.45, another fire at 12.51. So this gives suspicion to the common man that it, it could be an incendiary fire. 
somebody has played a music. So we have to analyze how going we are uh, declaring an yeah, incentive fire, then we should declare that other reasons are ruled out. That is, it is not due to electrical, not due to chemical, or not due to some other reasons. Then only we can say that it is, it is due to incendiary. So we will analyze that whether it is due to incendiary or not. Uh, so some other vital information I obtained during the visit was there was a failure of all the 363 line uh, subsection lightning arrestors and VFD drives. There was a failure of VFD drives in the auto corner machines. Normally, VFD drives on power electronics are susceptible to uh, uh, voltage uh, spike. So, in the power failure, uh, as soon as the first thing is first occurrence of fire, uh, these VFD drives were also fired. Then, uh, we have to note that two fire occurred on the same day. One is at the, you can see, this is the power of, this is the uh, lighting transformer. Your fire record again. This is another place, uh, somewhat some 200 100 meters away from that main powerhouse. And uh, it was an auto corner shop where the fire occurred at a particular place. It is not communicating. So these are also suspicious elements. And there was a history, previous history of fire in another shed in the same premises, some two months back. Prior to this accident. Uh, the coincidence was that accident also occurred after the installation of a rooftop solar power plant in the building. So these are all the information that I got. Then uh, let me run this uh, video that shows how uh, I'm not able to See, you can see a fire occurred at, uh, nearly at the center of the auto corner hall. This is the other end of the auto corner section. And see a person, a person all were engaged in extinguishing the fire. Uh, he was fully walking away from that uh, fire. These are the doubts that gives us. People are sitting up, trying to put up the fire. What you can see, they are putting up the fire using fire buckets. So this is a proof. We have to observe what we can observe here. A person is coolly walking away from the fire scene and they are putting out the fire. It was dark. Uh, the fire was put out using a fire bucket. That means the entire uh, fire hydrant system is depleted. So these three things we can observe. And uh, in the substation, a 33 gauge substation, there was an uh, overhead screen earthing and the three lightning arrests. You see the impact of uh, uh, burning of steel, that is, that uh, standard steel earth conductor, and that was attached to this uh, pole, RSJ pole. You can see the burn. I removed it to, to show the impact of the burn occurred, uh, melting of uh, uh, steel earth. Wire as well as the RSJ uh, from uh, due to the short circuit is not due to the lightning. It is due to the short circuiting of the lightning arresters in the supply of 33 kg uh, substation uh, after the occurrence of the lightning. Then there is one more thing you have to see here. This is the lightning transformer fire location one, and this is fire location two where uh, you have shown the video of the fire actor. And uh, on detail picture I will show. And here, see here, there is a beam. It's a shed of uh, 200 by 100 meter long shed. 
thought of understand uh, constructed using beam. There is an adjacent wall of masonry structure. You can see the steel where the autocon uh, stacks are piled there. And see the other side of the screen, the beam. The other side of the beam is yes, it's a core. You can see the impact of uh, burning here much. And the, you have to see the uh, depth of burning and the impact of burning on every place possible. So the burning is more at the uh, beam side, facing the corner side, at the corner side, and the burning is less at the side facing the switchboard side. And also there was no power during that period. Then you can see uh, a PVC conduit atop the uh, RS beam, sorry, uh, atop the beam that was running, penetrating between the wall, between the RSJ, sorry, the steel beam and the adjacent wall, which is penetrating because of gap. And you can see a, a, a lightning mast using early streamer emission at the corner of the building. And you can see an insulator also pressure to the ESC lightning. And a single down conductor from the from this top, this another thing. Single down conductor connected to the FL. These are the observations that I have made. And first thing as I have already told that the seat of fire is the important aspect. We have to, unless we analyze, we can't come out with the cause of fire. So let us analyze the seat of fire first. First thing. Uh, I have forgotten to tell one thing. The, the climatic condition also I have ascertained. And that in the particular part from the IMD we have obtained that it was cloudy and a gusty wind of 30 to 35 kilometers per hour and a seasonal uh, cloud formation as well as uh, lightning activity was there. Uh, and the coincidence of uh, power outage and uh, firing also requires attention because the firing occurred right uh, during the uh, lightning occurred in the premises. It was also ascertained that there was no problem with the adjacent consumer who is around uh, one half to two kilometers away from this premises. Uh, he, none of his lightning arrested and his uh, area was uh, facing any uh, lightning activity. So, we ascertained that the lightning could have occurred within a radius of one or one half kilometer from the consumer premises. So we know that how the lightning transformer, in order to ascertain how the lightning transformer could uh, fail during the lightning, we have to understand uh, some basic things. Here is one uh, figure, this is from IS-7 If you see all the three lightning access air fire, and it is a dead short circuit from the primary to the that is recovery to the body. And in that case, there will be heavy voltage impressed. This is called the stress voltage that will be impressed on the windings. But this is not connected. The frame and the neutral is not connected. When these are not connected, the voltage will be. Uh, fault current into resistance plus the nominal voltage. So this winding will be impressed much and uh, because of this, the same voltage this is a lightning transformer they have a delta star configuration. Uh, sorry, this lighting transformer, they have a delta star configuration. See, normally in a TNS setting system, the star point will be connected to a earth electrode first. Then only it will be the P, that is protective equipment, earthing conductors will be terminated here finally. But what, it, what was done in the site was, they have just looped this and avoided this earth electrode. As a result, 
this dns system was having a continuity with the rotatory earthing of a dt system see this is the dt system of other transformers they have three more transformers of 2.5 kg 3 kg per uh, sorry 11 kg per uh, and in the transformer there is a cable armor that can have continuity to the d so as a result any uh, voltage impressed will be facing faced by the downstream equipment in the absence of uh, earthing or the sharing of dns with the at system the effect was more at the lighting transformer when we measured uh, the temperature of the lighting transformer we found that there was no problem with the insulation resistance and the heat rise was just 80 degrees was uh, not so heavy it was not so high and we also found some cotton stuff burning inside the uh, lighting transfer it was not accessible it is rightly placed in the corner of a uh, maintenance personnel room nobody can enter easily not sensitive there was uh, not possible to open the terminal block or the door frame of the lighter transformer Uh, to insert any incendiary means of uh, like uh, accelerant that's not possible that possibility is ruled out uh, also there is no communication of fire between the uh, transformer and the, uh, and the cable trans beneath the transformer then we have seen inside the uh, inside the auto burner shop this auto burner shop see this is the beam that i have already shown see the beam this is a bottom portion of the beam that has this is the auto corner the on the tester mill uh, they they have cones that will be stacked like this see this side is i reconstruct the uh, accident uh, materials then this should face this because the burning is more i ascertained that the other side the sides facing the uh, shop floor was not affected so this should be facing the wall and this part will be at the bottom of the uh, beam so see the depth of charge the depth of charge is very high it starts it starts from here itself any low level firing uh can have a strong possibility the, the, the challenge in this fire investigation is whether it is due to accelerant or incendiary fire or it is due to lightning so we should uh, uh, without prejudice we should use all the possibilities to pinpoint what is the cause so here the fire uh, depth depth of charge on the cone cone is slightly packed depth of charge is high any fire as is said as i have told it will be this is a weak cone in three dimensional it will be a weak cone due to the absence of uh, 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 accession cone this is cut it is half cut so this is a weak cone uh, weak we pattern see up above this uh, beam you can see a pvc pipe penetrating between the uh, what is called the beam and the adjacent uh, building over and above this uh, pvc piping there is a cable rack this cable rack the, the camera portion is different so you, you imagine this is the beam this is the cable rack this is the wall so the cable rack is also penetrating so there is a, a gap between the uh, beam and the adjacent building uh, high gap at the top side and it was slowly reducing and finally it is it has a joint at the bottom part you can see that from the enlarged view how the crevice how this is the bottom portion of that beam see how the crevice happened due to the penetration of uh, materials so these are the observations that, that will be helpful in uh, see i have told that the side other side of the beam the same beam this is the this side is uh, burnt side 
and this is the non burnt effect this is a switch board see this area is not much affected there is no communication or uh, carbonization uh, compared to the, this side this is a both side we have to see this side there is a heavy carbonization you, you can see that even the ceramic wall got charred due to uh, a cone this means the cone is directly facing the beam as well as the wall you can see there is a plastic uh, worn out uh, uh, paper which is not part uh, it is at a height of around uh, say two and a half meter it was not burnt uh, then people uh, might have turned it out uh, turned it out because it's a localized fire the localized fire gives another suspect they are uh, uh, ignited one for incendiary fire there be a there should be an access to the location and an acceleration acceleration to the place the pole of burn pattern something like a simple small water splashing pattern of block will be there in the uh, floor due to the cps and the gravity draining of oil another so this is another you can see the lightning uh, mast this of uh, very similar emission it is placed at a corner see the panels are here it is placed at the corner of a building the reason is to avoid any shared and the uh, solar panels instead of protecting the building the first you uh, appears to be protecting the solar panels from radiation there are other means to uh, provide some type of lighting arrangement so it comes We'll come to this point later. And you can see the top section of the ESC. There is an insulator. This is the insulator. You see the insulator. Yeah. This is a metallic uh, mask. And top section is some, uh, I don't know what is the uh, ingredient available. Uh, they claim uh, several people claim several things i am not going to uh, debate on that subject much but i wonder how this small piece of porcelain uh, uh, insulator will prevent the lightning so far away from uh, few kilometers to the earth that can be prevented and and diverted through the uh, cable this is a uh, astonishing thing that i have said uh, See, we have lot of uh, such uh, uh, what do you call that uh, practices in our country. We have lost lot of monumental uh, or architectural uh, ancient buildings or temples in Tamil Nadu. So uh, there are damages uh, in the big temple, Pragadeshwar Temple and Madurai Temple after the addition of the CSC type uh, lighting uh, mask. So, Uh, whether we are providing a lightning protection or not, that is, we should assess. If we provide such a type of lightning, we are inviting the lightning, and we are not safely dissipating. We have to provide. There is no doubt. If we provide, we should dissipate the lightning safely. Otherwise, not providing itself will be somewhat better, in my opinion, for the uh, not for the commercial building or the. industrial building for the architectural building because people do not observe the down conductors and the, uh, separation everything is poor and the town said it's a total poor in the actual building whether it is esc or uh, conventional building frankly another thing okay. is a single cable insulator cable running to a single earthquake they uh, i enquired they said uh, they told it will cover 200 meters this is everything there is unfortunately there is no standard uh, in this country either iec or uh, yes uh, they propagate uh, leave alone this uh, top section the, the other uh, practices are also not available and this is the area where uh, The fire occurred. This is a central place. 
and this is the dark here it is very dark you can see people are not able to uh, observe this is one of the reason uh, they during the power failure the shop people could not have observed the any fume or any smoke coming out of a smoldering uh, smolder another thing is people do not stay in a dark room during the power failure workers will normally come away or uh, you come to a separate place but the fire damage was in two areas without communication between them and there's a low level burning fire was extinguished using water bucket failure of hydrant was there and power outage was there due to power supply auto connection was dark so these are the reasons we can give suspicion to the uh, incendiary fire but we have to analyze other reasons also that is the origin of fire is in the middle of the shop nobody will dare to go to a conspicuous and noticeable place to put the any incendiary also the, the the location i have told already shown in the previous slide the, the location is quite inaccessible it is between the beam and the wall it is quite inaccessible from the shop floor and there is no characteristic cool fire burn in the floor and it's a minor fire without any insurance claim in some places for the insurance claim also there could be some issue it's a minor fire without any insurance claim and uh, so it, it says that it is not due to incendiary and we have to analyze then what could be the reason so there was a uh, pvc cable peeled off because we have to see whether the electric electricity could have ignited if, uh, during the power failure and there was a small uh, we have uh, we have analyzed that there was no uh, uh, electrical thing in the vicinity only one switch board was totally protected by the uh, by that beam which is about 1 meter from the so the, the field of cable uh, was a very good condition and there was a spell of rain and gusty wind and lightning occurred within a short period of time power electronic devices uh, faulty and roof top building with solar panel and esc lighting so the history of fire also confirmed that there was a similar fire occurred two months with the same condition as similar so a strong doubt arises whether the fire can be due to light so there is no doubt the first fire is due to the surge to voltage rise and the second there is no other way we have to confirm there is absence of all the other causes and there is an absence of incendiary so we are, we are deciding that the absence of any sound conductors could have uh, suffer could have ignited at the crevices shown in uh, between the wall uh, and the beam where the outer bonds were stacked that small portion might have because the top sections were all widely open this is the shortest distance available for the fire to get arcing and ignite the board so this is the cause we i declared that it was due to uh, like me so what is the reason so both the fire have occurred due to a non compliance any anything which is non compliant means uh, that could be analyzed afterwards only actually non compliance are usually observed during the initial stages so unfortunately uh, either the, whether it's an architect or a consultant or a contractor or an engineer they, we all will Uh, search the reason after doing after conducting postpartum only in this due to this reason. similarly the reasons are already due to violations of iec it is the selection and application it was not a correct at the first place the lighting of the selection was wrong and the connection was also uh, second thing 
lightning physical damage to the structure. This is also violated as I have already opened. And yes, 732 and the BS3046. So all the uh, five, four boards on uh, standards are violated with regard to the surge and lightning partition as well as ESC. So these are the recommendations I have given. Um, first thing, at uh, the site itself, I have asked them to remove the neutral connection of the lightning transformer and ask them to provide that's all true. Then it was connected instantly. Power any further damage. Then I suggest that to have uh, standard practices uh, and comply with the part three of uh, IEC. Then the non-standard connection of line should be uh, a proper selection of lightning as well, as well as the connection, the distance. Because here, the lightning arrested earth was not connected to the protected equipment, that is the transformer. This is usually done as a mistake by all the people. And throughout the country, I can say, it was uh, observed in red side of the And the, the building should be bound at the uh, autogonal section as well as the uh, Adjacent the banking building, the crevices should be filled and such a and suitable surgeons should be provided for the sensitive electronic device and fire writing system should be removed, resumed immediately. And the fire writing pipe is running around the building, it can be best utilized. As a type B earthing system by connecting it to the local eco potential body conductor. And fire stops for double trenches and fire suppression system, these are all the additional things. They can provide emergency lighting and CCTV also to sensitize any uh, power, any mystery, and uh, any incident. So, these are the additional things I have recommended system analysis from harmonics study and the periodical test. So uh, with this, uh, I would like to go uh, my presentation. This is thank only- you. Thank you, sir. And, thank you very uh, much, uh, Dealt with so many aspects. Uh, along the test study, I think I have mixed up the standards and uh, classes also. Hope I'm thank waiting for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this insightful and wonderful presentation. And before I take questions, I would like to take one opportunity. Fortunately, the James Kutti sir is also there. I would like to invite him to say a few words and share an experience in very few times. Kindly and move James Kutti sir. Welcome to the Igniting Power Engineering platform. Gulab, kindly and move James Okay, 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 okay. Uh, Dr. Rajesh Aro, Apau sir, and uh, many others are there. Just you the best, sir. Uh, sir, actually, I have a doubt uh, uh, whether you noted uh, the DC or uh, whether you noted the location of the inverter. Uh, because uh, the DC current uh, uh, path or the DC current uh, cables were opened uh, uh, because during the firing, uh, supply is there and uh, uh, solar is also working. So in such cases, uh, I'm asking whether you noted the position of the DC line, DC line image. That is on my doubt. Uh, and another thing, uh, you explained uh, uh, everything in the most practical way. Actually, I was I am very glad uh, to inform you my sincere thanks because it was very much informative. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, and uh, I have initially told that the fire occurred at the instance of the power shutdown due to failure of lightning. Also. And during the power failure, the solar PV generation will also be simultaneously out. There can't be any generation. This, uh, this is a standard practice for. Uh, Great interactive solar panel. Once the power is pulled out, then generation won't be there. That's why I have shown you that uh, uh, solar panel generation details. There was no solar generation. 
But your question is whether the DC thing is connected. I don't know whether the DC to our question pertains to the DC thing and the SA thing. That is a different subject. Let us deal with the latter because there are people confusing all other thing. And as far as uh, I hope that I have answered your query, there is no power whether DC or AC during that period. Uh, sir, with your due permission, I want to ask one question related to the slide number 21. Awesome. Okay, and in the slide number 21, you have mentioned that 21. Okay, okay. Yeah. There was failure of VFD derived due to surge voltage. I just want to understand was there provision of any SPD or not? If SPD was yes. there, was it working or not? Yes. I suggested in my recommendation, I, I went to throw in a faster mode because you are having some restriction of time. So SPD was not there. I recommended to provide SPD. Okay. okay. No surge protection device right from the beginning up to the uh, final end. Even the lightning protection of lightning as such were non-standard. There is no subsequent uh, uh, SPD within the ST panel for the transformer also. Okay, okay. Uh, now I would like to invite KK Murthy sir kindly unmute and say a few words about the presentation of respected honorable Apouser. Hello. <clears throat> yes, Hello. sir. Uh, let me see, you, sir. <laughs> I'm seeing you after a long time. <laughs> How are you? Uh, sir, sir, sir. <laughs> Is that in me, sir? <laughs> yes, sir. You are a guru. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, no, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. You are a guru, I tell you. Uh -huh. um, first of all, uh, let me uh, congratulate uh, Papa, sir, for this presentation and a very opening uh, presentation. What he did here, 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 it's breaking, sir. Uh, My voice. Unable to get to... Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, so I, I congratulate you for this wonderful presentation, sir. And uh, also, Doctor, I, I congratulate Dr. Arora uh, for uh, inviting you for uh, giving this uh, webinar to the uh, for the benefit of. Uh, uh, the uh, people at large in the country and abroad. Once again, I appreciate Dr. Arora for all the efforts he has made to invite you. Despite your busy schedule, you could spare some time Thank for you. us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think there is some technical issues with the voice of Murti Saab. Now I would like to invite questions. If anyone has any question, can unmute themselves and ask the question. Please come forward to ask questions. It's a very right opportunity. Two legends are there. James Kuti Saab and the Apostle. Both are here. Please don't hesitate to ask your question. It's a golden opportunity to ask the question directly to two legends with me. Kuti sir and Abhav sir, you can ask questions of your choice, whatever coming in your mind related to fire. Please, Ravi Kumarji, you have raised your hand. You can unmute and ask. Gulab, kindly unmute Ravi ji. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Sir, I am Roy Kumar uh, from Salem, Tamil Nadu. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I want to some clarification about the lighting arrestors. Yes. So some of the generally we are providing ESC type lighting arrestors, general, general things. Hmm. 
which one the emission the esi type lighting or the conventional type sir we have lot of confusion of recent time uh, uh, so did you clarify the things oh, fine 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 uh, i have uh, somewhat explained in my session itself uh, which is efficient or inefficient is secondary this is uh, we should be banned we should be provided is the first thing as per iec is everything there is there is a clear uh, cut uh, guidelines how to assess the building risk assessment then how to provide a uh, uh, receiver that is simple franklin rod and how to provide a side uh, down conductor how to separate it from the building and how to connect this uh, down conductor number of down conductors to the uh, earth electrodes and regular at regular intervals of course a ring type uh, earth flat around the building in esc what people uh, i do not uh, want to make a clash with the esc type and franklin rod but uh, my point is we need not be an inventor or a scientist we let us abide by the standards and regulations regulations and standards do not uh, permit esc rods don't fall prey to the uh, to the marketing technique used by these people yes i strongly object the esc type of lighting or space See, you have seen in the my slide they have provided only one mast at a corner of the building and avoid the shadow and the solar panel and they have provided only one down conductor is there uh, any uh, any uh, standards providing such uh, activities nothing i i you can't find even you, you, you live along the esc you, you, you treat it as a franklin rod uh, in which standard a single cable connected a single electrode will protect a building you are inviting a trouble if you eliminate this esc itself your building would have not invited the lightning if it is a charlie but like yeah okay thank you Very well answered. Now, uh, Debbie sir, he is. I am great fan of Debbie sir. I am regular see the post of Debbie sir on the LinkedIn, and it's a great time to hear from his side. Kindly unmute, sir, please. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Doctor uh, Rajesh ji and uh, Appar Appar ji, for a great session, a case study. uh something different from a normal training session so very very insightful thank you very much aparaso uh, i have uh, if you can now uh, give a clarity on two things which i would like to uh, know about it you touched upon two technical points one is on the transformer neutral connection not connected to earth directly yes. that was one of the reason the how you said uh, tns system become tt system and point number 2 was how a power failure can contribute to a uh, la failure uh, if you can uh, kindly uh, give your expert uh, as, i mean if you can just give some insight to that it would be grateful thank you sir yes, these two things uh, are vital to be known by every people every day because we we do not select the lighting arrester according to the uh coefficient of everything as well as fall factor and the temporary or what is lot of uh, things are uh, parameters i have to select here yeah? uh, lighting arrest okay we have selected a good lighting arrest okay. then how to connect it even the connection uh, you have if you have selected a good lighting arrest and you fail in making a proper connection or a ec then the system will fail that's the first part uh, and uh, regarding i can give you a short answer only because there are two write up uh, i think that will be useful to you okay. you can uh, uh, mail i can mail you if you okay okay me. i have given my uh, mail id at the last uh, okay okay slide because this is a very lengthy thing i understand i understand and regarding that uh, tns i think uh, i am not particular uh, skeptic about whether it is tns or tt if you go for tns it's your liberty it is good for uh limiting the neutral earth voltage for it sector or multi story building and you can rely upon the over current protective device for uh, clearing the fault on earth right 
but TT system also provide a very good uh, option for mm. supply continuity, and you have to negotiate. You have to provide a, a, a fault clearing device discrimination. So we do not say that you go for TT or TN. Uh, number of electrodes depends. If TT is more, you can have multiple number of electrodes. That is helpful for the building to discharge the lightning. And right. there are numerous uh, pros and cons in every system. Right. And what I can say is, if you provide a TN, you provide a neutral earthing for the source at the transformer itself. Don't make it connected to the existing TT system. If you don't borrow the TT system electrode for this TN. Once okay. you decide this is a very small transformer. Right. Right, right, right. right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for explaining. And I hope uh, I will come email, oh, sure. your email for because I know it is a technical topic. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now, Kuti sir wants to say something kindly and mute. And... Actually, I want to answer to uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar. Uh, Apau sir replied to a point. See, actually, lightning protection means uh, uh, if there is a cage after the cage, Faraday cage. Uh, if you are inside the cage, you will be safe. Actually, lightning protections are already uh, done or designed through experiments, you know. Uh, but the early streamer emission, it was never proved as correct. That is why ESC is not allowed as per our 62305 standard and national building code. Uh, the, in the actual practice is you should have air terminal, down-conducted and proper thing. Then only it will be properly disposed. In the case, our apostles are uh, explained, the lightning was caused or lightning was, uh, light, uh, the early steamer emission rod attracted the lightning or it, it causes the lightning to affect the installation, but it was not properly disposed. That was the reason. Uh, the pro earthing was not proper. Uh, and uh, that is the only uh, cause for the fire. Only that much. Thank you. Thank, now, you. thank you, sir. Thank you. Kishan Kumar, you are free to ask your question. Dr. Kishan Kumar. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, I'm Krishna Kumar. Actually, I'm working with a company which is working lightning protection. I always use to calculate risk due to lightning. And when I calculate the risk to a particular structure, there is a factor that we have to consider risk of fire. And always I get confused that what should I consider? It should be a low risk of fire or high or medium. Because actually standard gives in the form of that that much of energy, let us suppose 100 megajoule of energy per meter square will be released when the fire occur to that particular material in the structure. So sir, is there any standard where I can found that this amount of energy will be re released by this and that amount of energy will be released by any other material actually sir actually how i, I can differentiate between low risk of fire and medium risk of fire to a particular structure so in in iec uh, sir, yes, sir. in iec 62305 part yes, 2 sir. It's clearly mentioned how to assess the uh, make the risk yes, assessment of the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Several parts and other parts also the yes, energy, sir. but it's a nature. We, we are not capable of quantifying the uh, with our limited resources. So far, we have quantified it and megajoule. It may be yes, even higher. But practically, uh, first thing is we have to assess the thunderstorm, uh, the lightning. Per kilometer by the IMD. So yes, sir. Based on that, you have arrived that uh, risk assessment based on the type of building. If the threshold exceeds the uh, formula given, uh, you see, yes, you sir. Yes. So far, uh, that is a risk assessment. But uh, as you say, it's a R&D work. Assess correctly. Assess the. Uh, okay. Lightning. Okay. Because lightning, we can see that. Uh, uh, lightning have destroyed a uh, coconut tree. It, it just gone in full flame. But nothing happens within a building. As James Kuti told, it's a, we are in a Faraday's gate. 
and we have distributed the lightning. That is a, uh, that is the importance of equipotential bonding. There comes the equipotential. It is not necessary you provide fast along. There are several ways. If it is a high risk building, the, the mesh. If it is a flat roof, it's a mesh. So I see clearly uh, explain what are the methods. But we can't uh, start a building in a hundred percent assurance, provided we know the phenomenon of hundred percent. In everywhere, we can't have a true value. Is that? something like seeing a god true, true is probability and uh, what do you call the nearest value alone have been taken into account in all the practices and they are we are happily and successfully satisfactorily doing all the work with those things when flop comes we go for another uh, mitigation thank you krishna Hello. 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 Yes. Oh, I am Vajre. I am actually energy and safety auditor, electrical consultant. So, suppose of you said uh, there were history of fire after installation of solar rooftops. So, what is the connection between the fire and the solar rooftop? Whether any observation was there? Yes. That yes. it has contributed to fire? Uh, yes. And that is, see, I wanted in this specific uh, case study, I wanted to eliminate all the possible causes of incendiary fire and all the possible causes of uh, lightning fire. So we, 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 we can only establish our probability can, is tending towards, more towards the lightning. In both the buildings, uh, after the solar panel erection, they have provided a yeah, ESA type arrester. That's why I have told this ESA type arrester, once installed in a monumental ancient building of the Temple, a 1200 year old temple, some parts got damaged during the lightning. Had we not provided, we have protected the building for the past 1200 years. Similarly, in this case, we can't uh, uh, take a risk being a uh, commercial establishment with. A, Pros of worth of material inside the process plant. We have to protect the building. Here, what we can do is, if uh, I have seen how you asked me how it is related, I said I say that it is related because of the particular type of lightning protection system arranged there. In the other building also the similar type of lightning protection system. Here also it's a similar type of lightning protection. System. Another thing. The autoconnect shared textile mill, they are having a steel roofing and steel facet. People are not using the roofing as well as the facet. Those metal parts can be easily uh, exploited to discharge their lightning. As James Kuti told, we are in a fire scale. But this gauge is not accepted. That's a, that is my. If there is no gauge, you provide something like a gauge. You are providing earth mat in the substation, something like that you provide a mesh on the rooftop. If it is a lean to roof, you provide a sufficient type of uh, uh, mask, lightning mask. There can be a combination of mask and mesh. Here, I, I once again say, both the buildings had a solar rooftop, solar panel. I do not uh, object the solar panel. I do not uh, blame on the solar panel. It's not a victim. The victim is, the, the, the sorry, the, Culprit is that uh, ESA type like me. In both the things, the ESA type was there. And so it gave uh, more explanation uh, that it could be due to lightning. And I have uh, also assessed the lightning activity in that area during that particular day from the IMD. Is there any other? Mr. Vlas, Vajra, do you hear me? Okay. Any more question to ask?
I think uh, we have already taken all the questions and time to say thanks to Pau sir for sparing his valuable time. And we are very thankful, sir, you spared your invaluable time. And thank you once again thank for you. giving this very wonderful and insightful session on the case study of fire. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, James. See you all. See thank you. All. you. Yeah. Thank you.